Hello, my name is Simon Price and I'm the UK Managing Director for Recommind. I'm joined today by, on my far left, Gert Rabes from CEB Tower Group. And to my immediate left, Matt Ward from Information Risk Management at Barclays uh, here in London. Our recent research shows that banks on average are storing around 20 uh, petabytes of data. What are the, the risks with this current uh, approach and situation? Well, we hear a lot of cliches about banks being in the data business and data being the lifeblood of an organization, specifically in financial services. We did some research about on the notion of data intensity, and it shows that within financial services and banking, typically we use three times more data than other industries like information services or media to get to a decision. So for every employee or for every million dollars of revenue, there is three times as much data sloshing about in the banks that need to feed into a process that could be an operational function, but more than ever it's going to be an operational function as well as an analytics function. Pretty much 80% of the, the typical job roles in financial services now have an analytical component. So if we are all trying to get to a better quality decision for trading, investment, general banking purposes, uh, being able to manage that data flow and the, the volume of that data is becoming much more important. And I, I, I believe the, um, the research showed that somewhere around 50% of, uh, or people's view is 50% of all data analytics that's performed doesn't then get reused. So we're, we're uh, looking over the same data time and time again for different opportunities and, and maybe not reusing it as effectively as we could be. There's got to be um, a little bit more focus from the business about the importance of their data. And by that I mean they've got to understand what that data is and to be able to categorize that in a meaningful way so that that data can be reused um, or where it's not needed, discarded. Um, so really this comes down to um, a bit of a records management problem um, to solve um, and with the inherent legal risks of uh, over-retention and potentially under-retention um, having a suitable uh, taxonomy that's dynamic enough to deal with change within the business um, and change within that data um, is hopefully going to help um, manage that 20 petabytes of information. Um, you know, that might be the right number, it might be too much data, but uh, as long as that data has meaning, that data is going to have an inherent value. So um, we have this large compliance team. We have money set aside when there's a problem. We've got the chief data officer now in place, talking with the technologists. Um, well, what possibly is left to, to keep you guys awake at night? I think that the first thing firms do is they ask themselves, oh my God, have I spent too much money? I've hired all these people, spent all this, uh, this, this, these dollars on technology. Um, but what is the rest of the industry doing? Are, are my peers, my competitors doing the same things? So there is still a huge appetite to get insight into best practice at the level of, am I organized in the right way? Is the CDO route the right way to go? Am I prioritizing the right kinds of technologies? And can I combine some of that spend with other priorities? So it's not just about compliance and information management. They're also trying to find out, can I help sort of feed better data into my CRM systems to have better customer intelligence? Uh, many firms are trying to link these types of initiatives with enterprise-wide business intelligence and dashboarding, visualization technology. So they're looking for leverage points which go beyond just a single hit on the compliance and on the information management, trying to get more out of that single spend. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be increasing demands um, from all sectors, really. Um, you know, the two main... Uh, people who are interested in, in information nowadays are going to be auditors um, so that people can, can measure success. Um, if you're going to do a big spend on people and technology, you're going to you know, want to evidence that that is actually going to be working for you. Um, and secondly, your regulators, um, to a certain degree, the amount of involvement they have with you, the, your ability to turn around their requests... Um, again, are all going to be key benchmarks, I think, for banks to know that the technology and the people and the processes are working together well. So 
maybe a question for another day is whether the regulators and the auditors are sleeping at night. But for now, you guys are. That's the main thing.